If Voyager was divisive, then Enterprise could start all-out wars. After the mixed reception of Voyager, Insurrection, and Nemesis, it was clear that Star Trek was suffering from franchise fatigue. Enterprise sought to correct that by going way, way back to a time before Captain Kirk. It was a series that was meant to show us the early days of Starfleet, how the first explorers of space overcame enormous obstacles and laid the foundation for the United Federation of Planets. Trouble is, Enterprise didn't actually get around to doing that until it was too late. Early Enterprise was a chore to sit through. They kind of shot themselves in the foot with their own premise. Because it was early days Starfleet, the stories all seemed like small fry. We just saw two Borg invasions, the Dominion War, and a myriad of other temporal and spatial adventures. Now with Enterprise, we get settling disputes between convoy ships, being trapped in a cave because of a storm, hostage negotiations, and so many other plots that were just dull. It could have been saved if it were for the characters, but that's where it kind of failed again. Scott Bakula of Quantum Leap fame was fine as Captain Archer, but that's the problem with most of the crew. They're just fine. They serve a purpose. There's only really two standouts, Engineer Trip Tucker and Dr. Phlox. Trip was a charming, relatable guy with a great sense of humor and an aw shucks persona. Dr. Phlox was an interesting new alien with an enthusiastic performance and a freakishly wide smile. It's also a true crime that Jeffrey Combs as the Andorian Commander Shran didn't become a full-time cast member because that guy is great. And that's mostly how it went for the first two seasons of Enterprise. It was perfectly functional as a series, but nothing ever leaped out as being exceptional. There was nothing to get invested in, a little for the actors to sink their teeth into. Oh, and that theme song is fucking awful. Every time it starts, I involuntarily cringe. But then season three happened, and then Enterprise suddenly, very quickly became fucking brilliant. Rather than an episodic format, we have a season-long arc concerning a malevolent alien enemy known as the Zindi. Right out the gate, they attack Earth with a superweapon that kills 7 million people. And the Enterprise has to get out there and stop them launching another weapon, which could destroy Earth. Even though it's the only ship that can do so. The stakes are high, tension is rife, and the reason why the Zindi actually attacked in the first place is a compelling mystery. What defines this season is how desperate things get. We've seen in Star Trek how advanced our heroes usually are. They're the flagship, the best ship, and the Federation is a force to be reckoned with. But finally in Enterprise, the setting pays off. The Enterprise is frequently outnumbered and outmatched by much more advanced alien races. They don't have a Federation fleet to back them up. There's no plan B. If the Enterprise fails, it fails. This season is great. Season 4 is loads of fun. Once again, the premise finally pays off. We actually get to see the foundation of the Federation. We get to see humanity reaching out and uniting with other alien races, developing the universe and serving Roddenberry's original vision. There's also the fan service laden episode In a Mirror Darkly, where we get to see our actors let loose as moustache twirling villains. Not to mention seeing a Constitution class starship kick ass with updated CGI and in full HD. Good shit. Unfortunately, it was too little too late. Enterprise was cancelled after Season 4, and Star Trek didn't return until 2009. If Enterprise had continued the way it was, I would have kept watching. I'm guessing that because the first two seasons were so dull, people just lost interests. I actually recommend watching the pilot to establish all the characters, and then just skip straight to Season 3. You won't miss much, trust me. You'll get a mediocre pilot in two great seasons instead of half a snooze fest and half a thrilling adventure. Enterprise shot up in quality for the latter half, but that first half still exists. I don't know, maybe others can find value in the early episodes, but I barely watch them. It's season 3 and 4 that I keep going back to.